G'day everyone, I am finally back to continuing work on the bus and in this video I'm going to show how I do the plumbing for the freshwater side of my system. So I've already done the grey water side which I shared in a previous video. I'll put a link to that video in the description below so if you haven't seen it you can go and check that out. But today I'm going to be starting the freshwater side of the plumbing. So I'm going to be installing my water pump and connecting that up to the freshwater tanks and the taps and everything that I've got inside the bus. Guys, I hope you can hear me okay over the ruckus that's going on behind me here. Just behind where my bus is parked, there's a drunken parrot tree and it's flowering at the moment, which means all of the lorikeets and the parrots in the neighborhood are going nuts in that tree and probably will be for most of the day. So, uh, yeah, you'll have to excuse the background noise that will probably be throughout this entire video. Um, but, yeah, the birds are having lots of fun. So this is my basic overall plan for the freshwater side of the plumbing. I'm going to have three freshwater tanks. There's one at the back on the opposite side to where my grey tank is. And there's going to be two towards the front, like in front of the rear wheels. And each of these tanks is going to be plumbed with its own separate line up to the pump. Now, some people join all their tanks together underneath the bus so that you can just fill them all up from the one filler point and they all sort of um, fill up together and then the pump can draw from all the tanks simultaneously. I didn't want to do that because this was just much easier to plumb the system this way. I didn't have to worry about, you know, getting the connections to the tanks all level, etc. And it means that I can uh, isolate a tank if I need to down the track. It means I'm going to have to have three separate filling points. Um, and it also means that, you know, when I drain one tank, I have to manually switch over to the next and so on. But I'm fine with that. So three separate tanks. Each one will have have its own tap so I can turn it on or off and they will go into this line into the pump. I'm also going to have an accumulator. I'll talk a little bit about that when I show you the installation of the pump. Um, and then from there, the water is going to go through an inline water gauge. So this will tell me how much water um, the pump is pumping out. So rather than having a gauge inside the actual tanks to tell me how how full the tank is. This will tell me how much I've used. And I know I've got two 60 litre tanks and a 50 litre one, so I'll be able to tell when the tanks are getting low and when I need to switch over. So this is going to be my inline water gauge. All of the water that the pump pushes out will go through there. And then from there, it's going to feed um, my plumbing inside the bus. So the cold water will feed the mixer tap in the kitchen, the mixer tap in the bathroom, and I've also got a tap for my washing machine. And also the cold water is going to go into my hot water system here. And then there'll be some hot water piping running from the hot water system out to the kitchen and the bathroom mixer taps. So that's the basic plan that I'm doing. It's pretty simple. I don't have a built-in shower in the bus, so I didn't have to worry about that side of things. Um, but this is what I'm going to be starting work on today. Okay, so this is the space under my kitchen sink, which is pretty limited, but you can see how things are going to kind of be positioned. So this is my 240 volt hot water system, and the pump and the accumulator are going to sit uh, in front of that. And I'm going to be utilizing some of the space in the cabinet alongside here because the plumbing, some of the plumbing will sort of come out. I'm going to have my um, inline water gauge sitting here. Um, and there'll be other plumbing pipes and so on in there. Now, the tricky thing with this hot water system is, as you can see, if I take this pump and that out of the way, it's mounted on these steel brackets. And you can see that they screw in at the front here. They also screw in at the back. Now, you can see already that 
I have really limited space under the sink here and there's no way I would be able to get my drill. Like I can't even see where the screw holes are on the other side behind this. So what I've done is I've actually made this floor uh, removable. The idea being that I can take it out, secure the hot water system down onto it and put it back into the cabinet here. And that way, if I ever need to get this out, I can just pull the floor out and take it off that way. I'm not trying to sort of get, get my drill or, you know, down into there. And I didn't want to just screw the front parts of the bracket in, obviously, because then it wouldn't be uh, secure enough. So there's a few things I want to do to this base before I do the final install. I've marked around where these brackets are for the hot water system and where the holes are. So I'm going to drill the holes for these through this when I take it out and then I'll be able to bolt this down onto the piece of ply. And the other thing that I want to do is just build a little bit of a raised platform in this corner here to lift the pump and the accumulator up a little bit so that the hose that comes out of the accumulator is going to clear this little shelf. Um, so I'll do that. So I'll be taking everything out, taking the floor out, doing those little modifications. And then while this is out, I think my plan of attack will be, because obviously the hose connections from the kitchen tap are going to be like behind this so you can't see where they are at the moment because they're behind this so I'm going to get the taps and everything hooked up first without the hot water system in place so that I can check to make sure that they're all okay and they're not leaking and then once I'm happy with everything else I'll be able to put the hot water system in and test that separately. Now for the freshwater plumbing in my bus I'm going to be using the John Guest system. Some of you may have heard of this. It's it's pretty well known in caravanning circles. It's basically a push to fit system. So it's similar to systems like Sharkbite or just the Smart Pecs that Bunning sells if you're familiar with those. But John Guest has been around for many, many years. It's very highly regarded and it's really good quality stuff. But, and it's designed specifically for use in RVs. So it can handle the vibration and things that you get in a moving vehicle. So I've got my pipe here. I'm using the 12 mil pipe, which is pretty small, but it's plenty big enough for my needs in the bus. So I'm using the blue for the cold water. I've got some red pipe for my hot water. This pipe here, this is not John Guest pipe. This is just plain food grade uh, clear poly pipe. This is what I'm going to be using for the breather hoses on my fresh water tanks. And I also have some black... Uh, John Guest pipe as well that I'm using to run under the bus to the tank and here is all my fittings <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to be using pretty much most of these I think um, so you've got different the John Guest fittings come in all different types I've got a T-piece fitting here um, you can get this one here is a Y Y piece connection, you can get elbows, um, all sorts of things. You can also get like fittings that will go from a John Guest pipe to a BSP thread and things like this tap. So you can um, have taps on your John Guest system. So yeah, so these are all my bits and pieces that I'm going to be hooking up over the next few days. Let's get started. The John Guest system is pretty easy to use and basically as I said it's a push to fit system so the idea is that this is the pipe here um, you have these fittings whoops <laughs> and the fitting here and basically all you do is you push the pipe into the fitting and you kind of hear a click and then once it's fully pushed in you can see I'm pull, pulling that with a lot of force and I can't budge it. So once it's fully pushed in, it locks in place and that shouldn't leak if you've positioned it properly. And that's all there is to it. The other good thing about these fittings is that they're removable. So if you, you can see this little outer, outermost part of the fitting here. If you get two fingers and kind of pull this in towards the fitting, then you can pull the pipe straight out. And that's all there is to it. It's really easy to use and... Everyone I know that uses it, once it's installed correctly, have had absolutely no issues with it leaking or any other problems. So um, that's the system I'm going to be using. 
I don't have any plumbing experience so it's pretty much foolproof for me or at least I'm hoping it will be. Now you can see here I already have some John Guest pipe running through here. When I was doing the plumbing for the grey water I also ran some fresh water pipe um, behind the fridge because obviously now that the fridge is in place I can't get to the back there. So if I come around the other side of the fridge this is where my bathroom sink is. Um, and you can see, I'll just come around the back of the fridge, um, you can see those pipes are running behind the fridge there and coming out to here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just hook these pipes up to the hot and cold hoses for the bathroom vanity mixer. Um, because then I'll put the ends of these pipes into that and then I'll have, I'll know how much length I've got to play with at the other end. These mixer hoses are just your standard half inch thread. So I'm going to be using these fittings here which have a John Guest pipe fitting at one end and on the other end is a half inch male BSP thread. So this should thread up into the end of the hose, the tap hose, and I should be able to put my John Guest pipe into the other end. So I've got my uh, cold water and hot water pipes secured onto the taps there. Tried to direct the hoses so that they're in line with this because underneath here I'm going to be putting a shelf and I want to be able to run some little storage boxes along here so just so I don't take up any extra space I'm trying to keep all my hoses uh, in the middle here behind this drain pipe. So I'm pretty happy with that. And so now I can go into the kitchen and join the other end of the pipes up under there. Okay, so now I'm under the kitchen sink and these are my hoses that are coming from behind the fridge. Um, so what I wanna do now is uh, put some tea pieces in each of these because what's gonna happen is the water is gonna be coming this way from the pump through my inline water gauge, which is gonna be here and down into this before it splits off into the kitchen and the bathroom. And then the hot water one's gonna be coming from the hot water system, which is just here around and join into that before it splits. So each of these I wanna to secure to this board that I've got at the back of the cabinet here, and I wanna join a T piece. And then there'll be a piece coming from here up to the kitchen tap mixer that I've got here. And this is a hot water one that I'm doing at the moment, so I'm making sure I put one of these hot water pipe inserts into the end of the pipe. These inserts just help to support the end of the pipe and provide a good seal inside the fitting. You don't need to use them for the cold water piping, but it is recommended that you use them for every one of your hot water pipe connections. So I've got the hot and the cold pipes hooked up to my kitchen mixer. Now what I need to do is connect up the plumbing between the pump and the water gauge into, into these. So this is the removable floor of the cabinet and I, as you can see I've raised this corner section here so that it's a bit awkward with one hand but my pump and accumulator will be able to sit on that and be at the right height. And I've cut this hole here um, because when the pump's joined up, the hose from the pump down 
to the tanks going to be going through the floor and under the cabinet if I need to remove the hot water system and therefore have to pull this floor out then I want to be able to disconnect the pump and be able to push the hose down through the floor so I can pull this floor out so that's what the hole there is for that'll make more sense when I show you how I'm actually hooking up the pump so I've just given this a coat of cabothane clear varnish so I'm gonna let that dry now and while that's drying I think I might go and do the plumbing from the freshwater tank so as I said I'm gonna have three tanks coming into this line into the pump there'll be two at the front here on either side of the bus and there's another one at the back um, opposite where the grey tank is. Now for today, just so I can test the pump and all the connections I've got inside, I'm just going to be hooking up one tank, which is the tank at the back there. And I've actually already run the line from the tank up into the bus. So that's what you can see under the cabinet here. It runs along the floor there behind the fridge. If I come... <coughs> here behind the fridge you can see it goes down through the floor so I actually ran that pipe when I did the grey water system just because the fridge was out and I had access to this area here and if I come under the bus here oh, I don't know if you can if you can see this but the hose um, comes down through the floor on the other side and here and at the moment I've just got it duct taped into the tank because I was driving up to Ellie Beach and I didn't want the end of this hose flapping around uh, hitting the road so I'll get rid of all this and I will now be able to join this pipe into the tank along with the fittings that I'm going to be using to actually be able to fill the tank. Actually, the first thing I should do with this tank is to install the breather hose, uh, which is going to be a bit tricky, so it'll be easier to do that when there's nothing in the way down here. Um, so I've already put my fitting in there, as you can see, before I installed the tank. I'm kind of wishing I'd attach the hoses to these fittings before I put the tank in. Uh, but I didn't think to do that but anyway I should be able to get the hose on there now the, with the grey tank on the other side I actually ran the breather hose pretty much straight up through the floor where the tank was I can't do that here because where this is like inside the bus is right where my batteries and things are and there just isn't any room to go up uh, through the floor there so what I'm going to do is with this one I'm actually going to run the hose from here along up to the other side of the tank to the back corner where there's a lot more room to go up through the floor. Alright guys, so that's my breather hose coming out the top there. Runs around that side of the tank to the back corner of the bus. And it comes up there. It's a bit hard to see but it goes up through the floor and loops back down. And this is the end of it, just hanging here. <laughs> so this is it here, comes up through the floor and then loops back down. And where it is here, this is a little wardrobe area that I've got beside where my washing machine will be. So there'll be clothes and things hanging in here, you won't even see that. So that's the breather hose done. Alright, so I'll just show you the basic idea of what I'm going to do for the tank inlet. Um, so the tanks have got a half inch threaded hole in them. So I'm going to have uh, a half inch nipple there that will screw into the tank. And then joining onto that will be a T-piece. And this little fitting here, which is a half inch BSP thread on one side, and a John Guest fitting on the other side so that'll screw into there so that will be where the pipe um, that go, that's underneath the bus goes up through the floor to the pump so the pump will be pumping out this way and then on this side of the T piece I'm going to have another nipple this one oops, 
This one is half inch on one side and three quarter inch on the other side. And then I've got this uh, three quarter inch ball valve. So I'll put that there. So that's like a tap. So depending on which way you have that, this is either closed or open. And then another three quarter inch nipple there. And on the end of it, I'm going to just going to have now. This is just a universal tap adapter. So I'll put that onto there. All right, it's a bit hard. Stay. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> So the idea of this is that um, when I want to fill the tank, I just hook a hose up to the end of it, open up this valve and water can flow into the tank. And then when the tank is full, I close off this valve and disconnect my hose. I'm going to put some plumber's tape around the threads of these, join all this together and then attach it to the tank. All right, so there it is there, all put together. Let's go and put it into the tank. Okay guys, and there it is. So you can see it's going into the tank at the bottom there, into that T-piece. And on this side, I've got uh, the hose connection so I can turn the tap on or off when I'm filling the tank. And I've got my John Guest pipe going into the other end here and it's running up under the bus to come up through the floor behind the fridge. So the tank side of things should be all set ready to go. I've just got to hook up the pump inside now. Alright guys, hopefully you can see this okay. It's a very small space, so it's getting really hard to film in here. This area under here is just in front of the rear wheel arch. So I'm underneath my kitchen cabinet here. Um, and I have this little space in front of the wheel arch, which is where I'm going to put the three lines coming up from the fresh water tanks. They will all join in this area here and go up through the floor here to where the pump's going to be. So the idea with this is you can see I've already got this pipe which is the one we've just connected to the rear freshwater tank and it's coming up from in there behind the fridge up through the floor and around to here. So what I'm going to do here is this line will have a tap on it, I don't know, somewhere back here. I'll have a tap on it and then when I hook up the other two tanks I will have two lines coming in this way so I'm going to use this Y piece here so each of these will run to each of the front freshwater tanks and each of those lines will have a tap on them let me move this one back a bit and then in the middle of that there'll be a T-piece like this. So now the idea is when I want to use this rear tank here, these two taps coming from the front tanks will be shut off so no water can flow this way. This tap will be open so water will come up from this tank up to here and up through to the pump. When this tank is empty, I can close that tap off and open up one of these taps. So that's how I'm going to do it. So what I'm going to do now is um, just hook these pieces together under here. Now, obviously, I don't have the tanks at the front connected yet, so there's no pipes here. I'm hoping I can just shut those taps off um, and no water will leak out of there just for the purposes of testing the pump and, and the inside system. I shouldn't get any water coming out when the taps are off if they're functioning correctly. So I'm just going to join it up like that and then I'll be able to run the line up to the pump. Okay, there it is. So the line coming from the rear tank with the tap that I can turn on and off coming up to the T-piece that goes up to the pump and then these other two lines will come from the two tanks at the front. 
So now what I need to do is run the line from here up through the floor that'll join up to the pump. So this is the pump that I'm going to be using. This is a 12 volt pump and it's a sure flow. This is probably one of the most popular brands of pump that's used in RVs and caravans and the particular one that I have is the 4009 version. So it pumps up to a pressure of 45 psi and a rate of 11.3 litres per minute which is plenty for what I need in the bus. So the way this pump works is that it has a pressure switch on the end here. So it gets connected obviously to 12 volt power and this pressure switch detects the pressure in the system. So when, the, when all your pipes are full of water and the taps are turned off, there's a water pressure inside the pipes which this pressure switch can detect. As soon as you turn a tap on, the water obviously flows out of the tap. The pressure in the system drops. That gets detected by this little switch here which kicks in and turns on the pump which pumps water back into the system to maintain the pressure. When you turn the tap off, the the pump will keep pumping until the pipes are full and the pressure is built up again. This switch will turn off and the pump will turn off. So basically this pump will turn on and off based on the pressure in the system. Now alongside this pump I'm also going to be installing this thing which is a pressure accumulator. Now this particular model pump uh, the manufacturer says you don't need to install an accumulator but I've decided to do it anyway for a number of reasons. Firstly the way these work is they have a little diaphragm in the middle here and on one side um, there's a chamber full of air and that air is under pressure so you can see it's got a little valve on the end and it's set to maintain a certain pressure in this reservoir here and then on the other side of the diaphragm is a cavity that gets filled with water so this gets connected to the pump and the rest of your plumbing system and when the pump fills the pipes it fills this reservoir in the accumulator and as this reservoir fills with water it sort of pushes on the diaphragm a little bit so you can get a little bit of expansion. So it just helps to smooth out the, the changes in the pressure that you get. Some of the slack is taken up by the water that's in this reservoir here. Now the benefit of that is because it's helping to smooth out the changes in pressure it means that your pump is not kicking on and off quite so often. So my thinking is that the less this has to turn on and off the less wear it's going to get and the longer it'll last. So that's one reason why uh, I want to install an accumulator. The other potential benefit to this is because you do have a little bit of room for expansion in the system, if the water in your pipes is exposed to you know, changes in temperature, so obviously as water heats up it expands and as it gets colder it contracts, so you get some expansion and contraction in the system based on changes in temperature and again this accumulator just helps to absorb those changes. So if you didn't have this there's always the risk that um, if the water in, you know, if the temperature in your van um, got too high and the water sort of expanded a bit, it could be enough to cause a bit of increased pressure in the pipes and your joints might be more likely to leak. That's probably a very minor benefit, but again, it's just something to consider. This particular one was only about $100, so I just figure, you know, in that's like a drop in the ocean compared to the whole plumbing system <laughs> costs in my bus. And I had the room to install one of these, so I just decided to go with it and hopefully it will help the whole system just run that little bit more efficiently. And the other thing that I'm going to have installed in my system is this thing. So it's a water tank gauge. Now some water gauges are actually designed to sit inside your tank and they tell you how much water is sitting in the tank. This particular one doesn't measure the water level in the tank, it actually measures how much water you've used. So how much water the pump has drawn from the tanks. And the way it works is, it has this little sender unit which gets plumbed directly into the main line of your plumbing. So the water comes from the pump through this little sensor unit here and out to your taps and the rest of your plumbing. And this little sensor measures the flow of water that passes through it. So it's actually measuring the amount of water that your pump has pumped into the system. So it equates to the amount of water that you've actually used. 
And I chose this system because it's super easy to install. It just gets incorporated into the rest of your plumbing. And because I've got three separate tanks, I can use this one gauge to measure my water use from all three tanks, rather than having three separate gauges in each tank. So this is the little sensor that detects the flow and then it gets connected to this which is a little monitor that is mounted to the wall and this will tell you how much water you've actually used. Now I'm not going to be hooking this up to power just yet. For now I just want to get my main uh, plumbing system installed and tested but I will be hooking up the sensor unit because obviously it's part of that main plumbing line. So I'll be hooking this up um, but I'll leave the connection of it um, for later after I've tested the rest of the plumbing. Well g'day guys it's day two of my plumbing installation and yesterday I actually got quite a bit done. I managed to hook up one of the water tanks and connect the pump to the taps that are inside the bus so I'll show you what I managed to get done yesterday. So in the cabinet underneath my sink is where I have the heart of the plumbing system. So under the cabinet here I've got the pipes that will run from the three freshwater tanks. Each of these has a tap on it so I can turn them on and off to isolate individual tanks. And from there the line comes up through the floor here into the cabinet into my pump. So I've got my pump and the accumulator installed there. And from there the water goes out to here through this little sender unit here which is my water gauge and into the plumbing system here. So it splits off to go up to the kitchen mixer tap and it goes behind the fridge here to where I have my bathroom vanity and it connects to the mixer tap on the bathroom sink there. You'll see I'm not using the John Guest pipe for the sections just on either side of the pump here. And the reason for that is because the Shoreflow manufacturer recommends that you don't use rigid pipe within sort of a foot either side of the pump. They suggest using flexible pipe. And the John Guest pipe is like semi-rigid, so it's probably not ideal. Um, so what I've used instead is this reinforced food grade uh, hose that I just got from Bunnings. It's the same diameter as the John Guest pipe but it's just a little bit more flexible so I've used that on either side of the pump um, underneath here so it goes from this T piece here from the tanks up to the pump and then from the accumulator around to the water gauge. The rest of the system I've used John Guest pipe everywhere. So at this stage I just have the cold water pipes connected um, and I have some lines here that will go to the hot water system which is going here. They've just got taps on them which I'll turn off for the moment because I just want to test the pump and these basic connections here to make sure there are no leaks and that everything's working. And once I'm happy with that I'll put the hot water system in and connect that up and test that separately. So today's job is to wire up the power supply to the pump so I can do a test to see A that the pump works and B that there are no leaks in the plumbing that I did yesterday. So this will be my first time doing a proper wire connection <laughs> so fingers crossed it all works uh, and there's no leaks. We'll find out.
so this is the tap that's controlling the flow from that rear tank and it is turned off and the other two taps are turned off as well um, so that is turned off so when I fill the tank there shouldn't be any water coming up past this tap here all right so I've got my hose here I'm going to connect it up to the fitting on the tank and uh, open up the valve which means that when I turn this tap on water should flow into the tank now it's also going to fill up that pipe a little bit um, to the same level as the tank so the pipe that's going from the tank up to the pump may also fill up to floor level and that's okay I've got the tap turned off in the bus so we shouldn't get any more water beyond that hopefully if that taps functioning um, I'm going to turn the tap on now and fill the tank and I'll know the tank's full when water starts to come out of that breather hose that I've got um, because it's at the top of the tank when water gets to that level it'll start coming out the breather hose and we should see it running out the back of the bus here so let's go turning the tap on Going in it's really hard to hear but I think I can hear it going into the tank I'm certainly not getting any drips or any leaking from the fittings under here So there you go, you can see the water running out the breather pipe there. So that means my tank is full. I can shut this valve off. Okay, all well so far so good. The hose connection worked perfectly to fill the tank. Only took like less than three minutes to fill that 60 litre tank. Uh, so that tank should now be full. So now it's time to go and test the plumbing inside. Okay, you guys, <laughs> this is the moment of truth. Oh, I'm a bit nervous. So I've wired up the pump um, and hopefully I've done it right. This is officially the first time I've actually wired up something <laughs> other than just practice bits. Uh, so we'll see. So I've got the wires from the pump coming from my fuse block. I just have to put the fuse in, which I'll do in a minute. And from there, the wires come out this wall here into the switch. I've got a switch to turn the pump on and off. So that's currently off. And I've got my connections done down here. Okay, so at the moment I've got all the tanks switched off and I'm going to open up this tap here which will uh, allow the water to flow from that tank that I've got connected at the back. These ones are shut. Uh, I've definitely got the taps to the hot water system that's not connected yet. They're turned off. So... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the pump on. Uh, I'm going to leave all the taps turned off for now because I just want to see if the pump works and it'll pump water up from the tank enough to fill the pipes in the system. So I want to do that first and see if I've got any leaks. Uh, and then we'll try turning a tap on. So let's do this and see how we go. Oh, this is so scary. Okay. I'm going to turn this on. Oh, I can hear a noise. Oh, and I've got a leak there. <laughs> Bit of a leak there. Okay, well the pump turned off, so that means that the system is pressurised. 
I had a bit of a leak there but I have only just hand tightened these ones so I might just need to tighten those up a little bit more let's go and see the bathroom okay the bathroom ones feel completely dry so I can't see a leak there at all Ooh, so far so good it's just this one here that's dripping a bit I'll just try fixing that for a second okay well I just pulled this off and um, re-tightened it and I think it's actually seating a lot better now so I'm gonna give it another go <sighs> Pumps on, filling, and now it's not leaking. Yay! All right. Time to test the tap. Here we go. Running water! <laughs> well, I'm pretty happy with that. Running water in the bus. And it seems like I don't have any leaks now, which is great. I still have to connect the washing machine, so I've got to install a tap for that and connect up that line. And I've also obviously got to connect the two front water tanks. Uh, but I'm happy that the pump's working. I'm obviously wired it up correctly. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so yeah, very happy with that. A couple of days work. Um, yeah, another job ticked off the list.